Simon Bell, the new sound of Nova Mornings in 2023 is Early Breakfast. Hey, good, there's Ben Lehman Bell from 6am and Jody and Hazy from 7. You make my morning. They're really funny. I love the change. You guys are doing great. It's amazing. We're loving the show. Every morning. Jody and Hazy. It's the new sound of Nova in 2023. Good morning, Adelaide. And yes, we are here. We're on. a public holiday. This is happening in the moment. Yeah. Um, So I I guess we should explain exactly why we're here. And we work for an amazing employer who said, hey, you've got the option if you want to work today or if you don't want to work today. Channel 10 doing the same. Um, Businesses like Telstra are doing the same. And so we said, yeah, feels right to work. So that's why you and I are here this morning. And if you are at work or if you're planning to go to work, give us a call, 13 24 10. We'd love to yeah, hear from you. We'd love to hear from you. There's a lot going on, of course, for your public holiday Thursday, morning in the morning. It's a smoking ceremony that's going to be held in Elder Park. That's happening right now. Started right six now. minutes ago. Yep. Um, there'll be a Survival Day march. Uh, that starts at Victoria Square at 12.30 today. They're going to go down King William Street and then there'll be some... Um, Lively discussions, I will say, on Mm. the steps of Parliament today. So um, a lot of people saying this is Invasion Day and that it's not, in fact, Australia Day. So some interesting points of view going around today. Mm. Congratulations to Taryn Brumfit, who is a beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, She's a body image activist. She did Embrace the Documentary, Embrace Kids the Documentary as well. She's been named Australian of the Year. Round of applause. And she's a, she's a, I mean, I don't want to name drop here, but she's a friend of yours? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, long-time friend, Taryn. Uh, friend, like, oh, I'll just uh, send her a text. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> well, that's okay. Go. I did, I mean, I became friends with her before she was Australian of the Year, so let's be clear about that. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just not, like, didn't befriend her because she's really, really important now. Jump on board because she's done some really good things. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. not why. Uh, big show coming up, Are You Schnitting Me? That's the game where one of us tells the truth, one of us tells a lie, and if you can guess who is doing what, then you'll win a $100 Schnitt house voucher. Some coffees on the line as well. Dead or Alive is coming up. It's where yeah. producer Zoe just really comes into her element. Yeah. Gives us a bunch of people, and we have to guess whether they're still with us or they've gone on to the next phase of their life, which indeed is not life. No. And whoever loses has to buy the coffees. And speaking of Dead or Alive, we'll find out if my husband is still alive after making some fairly derogatory comments <laughs> about me and my physical appearance. So right. that's coming up this morning. I'm all for Greg, I'm all for honesty. Yeah. But perhaps there's a line. <laughs> oh, you think? <laughs> uh, coming up next, though, in Jody's Juice. My goodness, you can go along to a health retreat with Pete Evans. You just don't get to eat. Let's talk about that. Yeah, Pete Evans has done some really, really um, good things, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. That hasn't pissed off anyone. <laughs> no. No. The biggest breaking story this town has ever seen. This is huge. <laughs> Jody's Juice. Well, Drew Barrymore interviewed actor Alison Williams on the latest episode of her TV talk show, but she did it in character as the star of Williams' hit film, Megan. Have you seen it yet? Uh, not yet. It's on my to-do list, though. I don't want to... So the premise of the movie is that it's a mother who creates a robot for her daughter so she's not lonely and then the robot turns murderous. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, there were nervous laughs from the studio audience as Barrymore interviewed her as the robotic doll Megan, complete with costume, wig, and wonky coloured contacts. Take a listen. Hi, Allison. Hi, Megan. Do you want to hang out? I'm not sure. <laughs> I know you're a very busy career woman. Yeah. It's hard to be that ambitious, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's hard. <laughs> How did you come up with my name? Um, It's a sort of, what is the word I'm looking for? It's Model 3 Generative Android. So it's Megan for short. I know I made you. Are you enjoying being in this form? You know, I love myself. Yeah. (laughs) Good. I really do. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit awkward. So sometimes, um, and it happens in radio also, you have, you know, like EP Sean will come and go, I've got this really great idea. I want to dress you up as a robot and have you interview the star of a movie. What do you think? And that's the moment where you push back <laughs> and you go, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah. No, I'm not really sure about it. Also, it depends on the person. For example, I remember way back in the day listening to Nova when Ryan Fitzgerald was on and they said, we want you to dress up as Lady Gaga and try and check into the Hilton. <laughs> and what did he do? <laughs> Sometimes it works, sometimes it misses. Yeah. Um, Hollywood actor Jeremy Renner was attempting to stop a snowplow from sliding and hitting his nephew when he, cr- he was crushed and he broke 30 bones. He's been left fighting for life. He, of course, is from Marvel fame. You're a spy, not a soldier. Now you want to wade into a war. Why? 
So basically the uh, emergency brake wasn't engaged, which would have stopped the snow removal tractor as it started to slide sideways. But uh, Renner's nephew was able to help him until emergency services got there and took him to hospital. Wow. 30 bones he broke. That's hectic, isn't it? That's quite... That's... I, I haven't really heard of... Something like that happening much ever before. That's unbelievable. How many bones did you break playing footy? Uh, I've broken three fingers. Um, I've dislocated a lot of joints, but no major bones. Yeah, right. Mm. I thought it was going to be more spectacular than that. Yeah, sorry about that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have asked. I've ripped a lot of muscles off the bone, though. Does that tweak your (laughs) interest? Uh, former celebrity chef and infamous conspiracy theorist Pete Evans has resurfaced online to spruik a pricey new fasting retreat with guests forking out thousands of dollars not to eat. So he wrote, our guests are into day four of their fast at the moment and they went through a breathwork ceremony this morning and it's pretty special. Guess how much it's going to set you back? Oh, no. How, how much is it going to cost me to not eat for an, almost a week? $2,500. Great. What on earth is that covering? Oh, God. Uh, Not food. His expenses? Um, I went to a health retreat once on the Gold Coast for five days, and I kid you not, you'd get up in the morning, you'd do five hours of exercise, whether it be yoga or a big hike in the hills or whatever. So you were absolutely famished. But outside of meal times, there were no real snacks. And so if you wanted extra snacks, you had to go to the nurse and ask... Wow. I think I believe they call that an institution. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you how much it cost either. Wow. Um, now, this is cute news. Paris Hilton has welcomed her first child with husband Carter Room. Oh. That's hot. <laughs> Indeed. Paris has surprised fans with news. She's welcomed her first little baby via surrogate. She took to Instagram with a very sweet photo of the little baby's hand. And she says, you are already loved beyond words. Um, it's a nice story, but this is just a thinly veiled excuse from me to play my favourite Paris Hilton song. This is um this is a big morning for not just Nova but radio in general. For the first time in the history of music slash radio, somebody has endorsed Paris's music. <laughs> Hi, it's my guilty pleasure. Is it? Thirteen twenty four. 10. If you have a guilty pleasure song, let us know. I'd love to hear on the text line as well. Uh, no, that's the email. 0400-919-919. Let us know your guilty pleasure song. And also, if you like Paris's work, take us out on it, please. Oh, yes, Go no. Ahead. Go on. Should, should we? Go on. Oh. Abby in the newsroom's nodding along. This so- song slaps, Abby. Oh, this song slaps. <laughs> WhatIf.com helps Aussies make the most out of every trip. Book a hotel, flight, surfboard and snorkel, all before you can say, Bricky Buffet. Jump on the What If app and get started. What If it's Aussie for travel. Can't say that. But you can't say that. You can't say that. Say what? It's a new little thing we've got going on here, Jody. where basically it's uh, a space where I can tell you some of the things where I really, really shouldn't have said, mm. only in public. And this has been born through me becoming a cyclist. Yeah. There's a lot of anguish towards cyclists I from drivers. Genuinely don't understand it. Share the road, people. <laughs> you got abused the other day, though. I got abused. I was in the, minding my own business in the bike lane. Mm. And then this guy went past, toot, toot. Fuck off, mate. Mm. Like, well, I'm just, honestly, well, how have I inconvenienced you in your day? That's the fact that you're riding a bike. Drive on. Yeah, I felt that mm. uh, just a couple of days ago as well. So picture me in the city, uh, minding my business. Um, veering in and out of traffic like a madman. No, okay, that probably annoyed a few of the drivers. Right. And it's always the tradies who come out next to you or the council workers. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're very open with their feedback. Yeah, they are. And one bloke in particular, which he must have been 50 plus, I reckon. Yeah, right. And my little brain's gone, okay, 50 plus with an earring. <laughs> <laughs> Something to think about there. To which he said... Something along the lines of get off the road or stay off the road before you get hit. You expletive, expletive. Okay. And then bang, and my head fired back, and my brain fired back saying, oh, thanks for that Justin Bieber's shit uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I thought, I'm on. I'm on here. I've absolutely owned this bloke. But then his younger passenger, oh, and this no. is where it really, really turned. His yeah. younger passenger, and I'm not joking here, turned over, because we stopped the traffic lights, and said, I've been listening to you on Nova. Oh, Yes. And I went, oh, okay, this could be positive. Yeah. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, you're just like Fitzy if Fitzy was a sh- bloke and not funny. <laughs> and then, so I've gone, 
Oh, my God. <laughs> I've got two seconds to respond here. Oh, no. Work, brain, work. What have you got here? Yeah. And my brain showed me a picture of Ryan Fitzgerald, and all my brain said to me was, Fitzy! <laughs> That's all I got. I said, okay, and I wrote off. Oh. That was it. So there you go. This is Jody and the poor man's Fitzy on Nova. <laughs> Adelaide's Jody and Hazy. Are you telling me you built a time machine? Hazy's on this daisy. Yep, it's Thursday. You've smashed it so far. Two more days to go, and then we smash the weekend. Well done. 26th of January. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. We'll start in 1998. President Bill Clinton. Mm. He said this. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Oh, but boy, oh boy, he did. <laughs> mm. And there's a dry cleaner out there that would argue otherwise. Yes, and one particular blue light which they ran over, that particular dress, and the blue light went bang! <laughs> it <just> exploded. <laughs> <laughs> it's never worked so hard. 1993, the West Indies defeated Australia by one run in the fourth test at Adelaide. And that test match has been won by one run. The West Indians are delighted. It's been a magnificent effort by both sides. That's when they were really, really awesome and fun to watch. Yeah, they were good back in the day. Oh, Brian Lara, oh. Courtney Walsh, Curly Ambrose. Big bird. Is that big Joel Garner? That's big Joel Garner. He was very tall, quite a reputation that big fella had. 2004, a whale explodes in the town of... Tainan in Taiwan. It was a build-up of gas in the decomposing sperm whale, which is suspected of causing the explosion. I mean, give me a dollar for every time a sperm whale blows up, and it'll be my shout for coffees. 1958, Ellen DeGeneres is born. Today's her 65th birthday. What a remarkable career she had until she pissed off absolutely everybody that she interviewed. Like, no. Oh, my gosh. And then people were just lining up to pot her and say, hey, she's a cow. Yeah, who would have thought it would all come out? You're all lying. No, they're all pretty unanimous there. 2014, 56 Grammy Awards. Lord wins best song for Royals. That was such a, such a good song. Still is a good song. She's coming to Adelaide as well for the Adelaide Festival. Nice. It's really nice. And the number one song on January 26 in 2014 was Timber by Pitbull featuring Kesha, Kesha, which I believe was actually the theme song on your MySpace page for a while. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Two stories. Somebody's lying. Somebody's telling the truth. If you can correctly guess who is full of it, you, or maybe telling the truth. You get a $100 Schnitthaus voucher. How good would that be? So many schnitzels. It goes a long way, 100 bucks to Schnitthaus will give you the hot tip. Yep. Um, I'll go first. Okay, so let's go back to 2003, shall we, when I did all of my HSC, because I was in New South Wales and Sydney at the time doing my high school exams. Sure. Did all uh, I mean, my preparation. Sorry, I don't want to jump in and talk over you here, but I'm just shocked you actually did Year 12. <laughs> a lot of people say that. Why do people keep saying that? I don't get it. I completed year 12. Okay. I promise. Uh, yeah. So, and I jammed in a lot of the study, a year's worth of uh, studying the few days before the exams. Yep. Um, one particular exam, which was supposed to be my bread and butter, was PDHPE. So PE, you know, sport, all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's a theory exam, of course, and I was a little bit unprepared, so I did what most blokes do, and I um, took some little notes in to potentially <gasps> help me out during the exam. But unfortunately, that particular year, there was a massive, massive crackdown on cheating. And some of my notes were hanging out my pocket. Yeah. And I got caught by one of the um, teachers who was going around. Okay. And I got done in front of everyone. Okay, that's embarrassing. It's really, really embarrassing. And what it did do as well was just completely destroy my HSC because basically what happens is they give you a zero. Yep. They make out like you have done the exam, yeah. but they give you a zero. And it's, it's an average for your whole studies so it really really brings it down it's like you get a run of 50s in cricket and all of a sudden there's a big fat duck in there yeah right okay mm. yeah, so there you go and now i'm here let's um <laughs> <laughs> didn't that blow up in your face no, <laughs> now you're here doing your dream job wow that really backfired didn't it you cheating um if we're gonna do the exam thing i actually did study journalism and communications at uni no, and I've seen you work. That's a complete <laughs> lie. 
<laughs> Absolute lie. Don't isn't you it, laugh at me, Isn't it, Sean? Sean? <laughs> isn't it? Look at him, he loves it. He goes, he also goes, no, I've seen her work. No good. I did a communications degree at uni. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just because I don't reply to your emails doesn't mean I didn't study communication. Um, and I got to my last six months of study, and that's when I met my first husband who played cricket for Australia. And so... He went on an Ashes tour, and so he said, come with me. And I'm like, I can't. I'm studying. He's like, just do it online. So that's what I did. And then I did my final exams. They send you off to some sort of, you know, hall at a university. I sat my final university exams in London, and one of the questions on the exam was, what's the FTSE 100? It was just like general knowledge questions. And I wrote, it's a freeway in Melbourne. The FTSE 100? <laughs> I would have said the same thing. Freeway in Melbourne. Um, and obviously that was incorrect, but I did pass my exams mm. and get my degree, unlike you, who yeah. pretty much failed year 12. And I love that there's people in the exam room where I was like, that's that girl who's um, with that Australian cricketer. She must Which be one is he? Oh, I think it's David Byrne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the London Stock Exchange. FTSE 12. FTSE 100. FTSE 100. <laughs> We're learning... We have good, solid educations behind us. We promise. One of us is lying, though. Can you believe it? They both sound like lies. <laughs> Can you correctly identify who's lying? <laughs> Two stories, one truth, one lie. Yeah, so just a quick recap here. You were saying that you cheated on your year 12 exam and it brought down your score considerably. <laughs> considerably is what I'm trying to say, and I think that's a great big fat furphy. Because I got caught. Yeah. Yes. But that's a furphy because you would have had a crap score anyway. Again, this that's a truth mixed in with the potential furphy. Yep. Um, I just told the story about how I sat my final uni exams in London on an Ashes tour, and one of the questions was a general knowledge question. It was, what's the FTSE 100? It's on the news every night, but yet I said it's a freeway in Melbourne. Oh, good answer. Yeah. FTSE 100, it would have stumped me too. Well, I had nothing, so <laughs> that's what I came up with. FTSE 100 stuff. Um, Emma from Unley has given us a call. Good morning, Emma. Good morning, guys. Love the show. Oh, thank you, lovely. Okay. So who's telling the truth and who's lying? All right. I think Hazy is telling the truth because I think you would cheat in school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And Jodie, I don't think you're dumb enough to know what the foot, not know what the footy one, footy 100 is. <laughs> There's so nice. many um, Layers to unpack sly here. little backhands <laughs> within these heads. <laughs> Love it though, Emma. That's good. Okay. Um, explain yourself then, please, Joe. All right. I mean, how could you possibly not know what the FTSE 100 is? Emma, it is entirely possible that I did not know what the <laughs> FTSE 100 was. That is a 100% truth, my love. Sorry. I'm so oh, sorry no. you missed out on a schnitzel. No. <laughs> oh. 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 And look, at the other truth to it is that uh, I did actually cheat. Did you? Yeah, I cheated in all of my exams. Oh. Yeah, I would take notes in, in my pocket, and then you go to the toilet. But you never got caught. So they would follow you to the toilet, but they can't watch you go to the toilet. No, that would be rude. So you'd go in there, and um, you'd look at your notes and go back down. How'd that turn out for me? What, what score do you reckon I got in my HSC? I don't know. What did you get? 62. <laughs> <laughs> Jody and Hazy's Dead or Alive. This is a little part of the show called Dead or Alive, where we like to turn um, someone's death potentially into something positive, um, mm. turning into a little win. Mm. Does that make sense? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Producer Zoe joins us in the studio. You are the official adjudicator. Well done. Congratulations. Right. Thank you very much. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Let's rip into it. All right. First one. Coolio. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realise there's nothing left. Artist Leon Ivey Jr., known professionally as Coolio, an American rapper, he achieved mainstream success as a solo artist in the mid to late 90s with his albums It Takes a Thief, Gangster's Paradise and My Soul. Born August 1963, dead or alive, Jody. Alive. Hazy. I'm 23 now, but will I live to see 24 the way things is going? I don't know. Coolio is dead, and that happened quite recently. Coolio is dead, yeah. Oh. Oh God. Uh, he was 59 years old at the time of his death. His management stated he appeared to have suffered cardiac arrest. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. that's, um, that's yeah. always 
he like yeah at a friend's house yeah oh yeah <laughs> Uh, you can't yes. see that, but it's always just winked at me like. Uh. Hey, what does that mean? What does that wink mean? That means there might have been some substances involved. Mm. Oh, that's how you ruin a party. Yeah. All right, big Julio. Yeah. All right, next up, Rod Laver. Jimmy, Roach is shot, rocket it at Laver. Oh. Laver is the rocket. Rodney George Laver, ACMBE. An Australian former tennis player, Laver's 200 single titles are the most in tennis history. Born August 1938, dead or alive. He's can, alive. Can I go first? <laughs> well, sure. Um, <laughs> Jody's already gone. So, as I was getting ready to open my mouth and speak. Um, he's alive, but it looks like it could be a weekend at Bernie's type stuff. Like It looks like it could be. Can I say that? No, he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. Yeah, we're both saying alive? Yeah. Think yeah. He's alive. Excellent. Yeah. Well done. So, Hazy 2, Jody 1. Jodes, you need this to stay in the game. Peter Mayhew. A British-American actor. Best Peter Mayhew. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. It's very it's good. funny. That's good. A British-American actor best known for portraying Chewbacca in the Star Wars series. He played the character in all of his live-action appearances from the 1977 original right up till 2015, The Force Awakens, before he retired from the role. He was born... <laughs> I was going to say. Um, Zoe, can you give us some, uh, some context? What's, what's Chewbacca sound sound like? Oh, it's not fair, is it? <laughs> I can't do it. Oh. Got... <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, no. Chewie, we're home. Born May 1944, is Peter Mayhew, Mayhew dead or alive? Jody, 44, quick maths in my head, 60, plus 18, 78. Um, I'm going to say he's still alive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. People were shaking. That was really good. <laughs> um, I'm very, there you go, sorry, you're on. Um, unfortunately, he's dead. Right, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're both saying, what are we saying? I said he's alive. Alive? Ah, he's, uh, he's dead. He's dead. Oh! Jones. Oh, Jones. 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 Uh, Mayhew died of a heart attack in 2019 in his home just before his 75th birthday. Bummer. Oh, oh, God. Uh, but that right. also does mean that Hazy has won. Oh, Jones, no. coffee is on you. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll take a cruffin too, thank you. <laughs> I'll take a cronut. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Hazy, you know I love my husband. But he is absolutely clueless, like you all at times. Excuse me. And so I'm just gonna I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight into the fact that sometimes he says things and then looks at me blankly, like, "What? What's offensive about that?" Straight to the point. Okay. So my mother, Colleen, is in town at the moment. She's come down for the last week of school holidays just to help us get through. Just actually, not even get through, but survival. We're all about just keeping our heads above water at the moment. Bless you, Colleen, if you're listening this morning. Bless you, Colleen. It's great that you're here. Um, Colleen has been prone to say a few things to me that I've gone, oh, really? Okay. Like when she first arrived, she goes, oh, that's good, darling. Your skin's cleared up. (laughs) I didn't even know my skin was a mess, but thank yeah, you exactly. for letting me know that it's better. Yeah, let me just find the negative in that comment. <laughs> no. So first whack, and then she goes, but actually, you're looking quite fit. And as you well know, Hazy, at the moment, I don't feel very good because I'm doing both ends of the day, three days a week, and I can't get to the gym, and I'm exercise for me is like an aphrodisiac. I love it. It's, it's what do you call it? Nature's cocaine. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a solid release of endorphins. Yeah. So I'm not getting that, so I don't feel overly great about myself. And so I said, oh, thanks, Mum. That's really nice that you would say that. However, I don't feel very good. And husband, who's li- listening in from the kitchen, gives it a bit of a, what do you weigh? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I don't know, babe. I haven't weighed myself since I had Harper, who's the fourth child, and I don't plan to anytime soon. And he goes, oh, that'd be a good stunt to do on air. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we won't be wa- Don't write it down, EP Sean. Stop <laughs> writing with your pen. Um, and I said, I don't know what I weigh, but I feel like I'm the biggest that I've ever been in my life, and I genuinely do. And he goes, no, you're not. <laughs> I, said, I am. I, I, I definitely am. And he's like, nah, nah, you've definitely been bigger. <laughs> Gone. Really? He goes, yeah, and if you don't believe me, I'll show you some photos. <laughs> I thought this was the part where this was a stunt. You'd be like, actually, I am pregnant. Congratulations. <laughs> no, never again. I'm going to say 99% of the time I always agree with Greg. 
Right. But for the sake of this working relationship, yes. I disagree. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, there you go. Good stuff. It's Big Jody and Hazy. <laughs> <laughs> Getting through my morning every day. Nova 919. Look, if you are a business and you are operating, say, on this public holiday, geez, get in touch with us. Give us a call, 13 24 10. Hell, send us a text. Oh, yeah. 0400 919 919. Yeah. Um, if you're stuck with the kids at home, just do what I've done today. Bring them to work. <laughs> yeah. She, she is. Okay, you can tell. Here's some good example of some A-grade parenting. So Peyton, the lovely Peyton, is in today and she is now chock-a-block full of sugar because yeah. she might be on her third Zuper duper <laughs> Not and the first one was consumed just after 7 o'clock. Nothing like a 7 o'clock zooper doop just to get you up and in the spirit. Well, you know what? I had to keep her amused because she spent the first hour in the studio and then she goes, oh, God, you two have still got <laughs> another hour to go. And I'm like, okay, go and get another zooper duper then. And we're like, come on, come on, Peyton, stay here. I've got some Jason Derulo coming up for her. <laughs> no, we wouldn't budge. She wasn't about it. It's a zooper doop that got her over the line. She might get up and about about the uh, big wedgie tickets, though. Yes. Uh, uh, professionally endorsed by my son, uh, Henry, who's four years old. He said it was the best day of his life. I love that. In his four years. Yeah. He has yeah. a lot of best days of his life, though. He could only go on the little wedgie, though, couldn't he? He did. Mm. Smashed it, though. Yeah. Let's really? do a ticket blitz, shall yeah. we? Yeah, go on then. Okay. 13, 24, 10. Uh, jump through and we will send you off to the Big Wedgie. Nova presents the Big Wedgie Inflatable Water Park open all summer at West Beach Parks. Book your tickets now at thebigwedgie.com.au. Guys, if you haven't been, you'll absolutely love it. Mm. If you're not a Big Wedgie person, maybe you're a Big Chucker person. The Big Chucker, really? which you went on. I know. And there's video of it. I saw the footage. I said to my husband that we'll never see the light of day. Put that away. Limbs everywhere, wasn't there? <laughs> It's quite the sight for sore eyes. All right, if we want to send you off to the big wedgie or you want to go, uh, we will hook you up right now. 13, 24, 10. First three, let's do it. I've got one here. What do you got? Okay. So when you were a Casanova for Nova back in the day, yeah. what were you known as? Uh, um, horse. Horse. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Call me. No, just hazy's fine. <laughs> Oh, what's a okay, text? No one's what's calling. A text? No, 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 no. No one's calling you horse. No one. There is not uh, one person on the planet. This is how nicknames are born. <laughs> okay. Jodian horse. Oh, I've got a text, and it said, "I've just. You, you, oh, I'm just. <laughs> I need to regroup." Oh, here it is. It says handsome hazy. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. Schmidt Bentley Engineering never closes, mate. Would love a plug. Oh, there we go. Schmidt Bentley Engineering. That's my good friend Chris Schmidt. Good morning to him. What do they do? I'm going to assume engineering. Yes. Who would have thought? Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, Nova presents a big wedgie inflatable water park open all summer at West Beach Parks. Book your tickets now at thebigwedgie.com.au. Let's rip through this this blitz. Okay. John from Tanunda, you're off to the big wedgie. Thanks, uh, Jody and Horse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how it starts. It's Thanks, John. <laughs> Georgia from Seaford Rise. You're off to the big wedgie with the kids. Woo! Awesome. Kid. <laughs> well done. Lisa from McGill. Hey, oh, Lise. Hi. Hi. You going to the big wedgie? Woo! Thank you. Amazing. Karen from Valley View. Have you been yet? No, I haven't. Thank you guys so much. And I love the show. I love your banter. Oh, my God. I love you. Thank you, Karen. Vicky. No worries. Vicky from Brooklyn Park. Hey. Hey, how you going? You want to go on a massive water slide? Uh, well, I'm not me, but I'll definitely get to take the kids. Well, no, only if you go down, Vicky. That's the uh, only rule. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a go. <laughs> no, she won't. A few, She's uh, not. A few clauses in this thing. <laughs> no, no, no. And one more, Sam from Golden Grove. Hey, Sam. Hey, how you going? Mate, you're off to the big wedgie. Oh, you beauty. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Well done. Very good stuff. Okay. Best way to spend your summer. It's only here for a limited time, so get involved. The big wedgie, we're all over it. What a morning it's been. Oh, it's been incredible. Mm. Um, and look, big show coming up tomorrow as well. Looking forward to another round of mean tweets, which doesn't sit well with you because uh, sometimes feedback's interesting for you, but I love it. I, it's food, isn't I it? I genuinely do not enjoy it. Not for one second. Nah, the mean fine. tweets. Uh, Judge Jody, she's back in court tomorrow. Mm. With the gavel and the wig and the gown, the whole works. I'll be presiding over a predicament that someone in South Australia has. Yes. Mm. Uh, thanks for getting in touch this morning as well, particularly businesses. Uh, well done for being open today. We're very yeah. lucky that we got to uh, come in and work. Yeah, we had the choice. Yes. Um, and good luck to Peyton, your daughter, who's on her fifth Zuper Duper. <laughs>
She's absolutely sugared up to her eyeballs. Yep, she's raided the Casanova fridge. Yeah. She's basically milked Nova of everything it's got. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, Um, have a great day, big horse. Yeah, no worries, it's Jodie Horse <laughs> on Adelaide's Nova 919. <laughs> Make sure you check out the podcast. We'll catch you bright and early tomorrow morning from 7 o'clock. Goodbye.